Thank you. Thank you very much for, for uh, being here with us. I've been jumping from, from one session to, to, to another. Um, let's, let's introduce ourselves. John, then Jim, then I'll, I'll introduce myself. Please, John. Yeah, Alfonso, thanks for uh, inviting me to be a part of this panel. I serve on the Hyperledger Learning Materials Working Group. I am the co-founder of the Global Blockchain Summit, and I'm really uh, passionate about Hyperledger and especially smart contracting. And I do a lot of collaboration with the Accord Project team, which is focused on natural language smart contracts. Thank you, John. So Jim Mason, um, I work with Paramount Software and Sky Web Team on as a blockchain practice leader on a lot of different blockchain projects. And I've been working in the Hyperledger space since 2017. Originally, I had worked with Fabric to build out a vehicle identity blockchain. That means I was eventually part of uh, Mobi, Mobility Open Blockchain Initiative for the mobile blockchain space. Worked on some standards groups there, part of the European um, blockchain forum now where we upload study and develop papers, if you will, around uh, topics that relate to regulation or the economy on blockchain kind of thing as well. But I do a lot of projects uh, in the energy space. I've done some also in supply chain as well as mobility. So um, it's a great technology that adds a lot to solutions. It's, of course, it's not by itself a solution, but it, it certainly does add, a, 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 I'll call it as an important aspect to a solution in my mind, as database or any other kind of technology uh, when you look at it. So that's, that's my background. The Learning Materials Working Group, honestly, um, I lead the Hyperledger Public Sector Working Group, and I'm jealous of how well um, Bobby Mascara has organized the Learning Materials Development Working Group, and I work with you guys on it. But I'll say uh, it's it's the only one I go out there and I look at and say, well, it's more than just a list of speakers and presentations and stuff. It literally is what I call a library that has been put together and really thoughtfully uh, organized. And to have a library that's useful as a resource, it means that somebody has to curate all that content and organize it. And I will say, although Bobby's not here, she's infinitely more competent as a curator than I ever would be. So we're lucky that in a sense, she was the one that has put together this uh, group and really provided the resource that I'm using a lot. In fact, actually, right now, I can tell you, I mined it over the last week. I'm working in trade finance and in supply chain. And if I go out into the learning materials working group, I can find under the use cases section a lot of resources there that relate to things like letters of credit. And it's not like it has everything in the world. But I'm amazed when, every time I go back there at the depth of the content that's there, along with the templates that we all can use as well. Thank you, Jim. I'm co-chair with, with Bobby Muscara. I'm, I'm very honored that Bobby uh, proposed me to be a co-chair you know, of the Learning Materials and Development uh, Working Group. Um, as yourself, I'm, I'm quite an admirer of, of Bobby. You know, um, her daughter is getting married, and that's the reason she'll be with us in a in a video. Okay, I'm very happy also to see that we have a large large audience of, of participants. Okay, and the learning materials basically, the way I like to see it is like it is the map of Hyperledger. Okay, it's it's uh, an entry point to our inner uh, universe. Uh, we are such a big community. Um, we've grown mm -hmm. to 73,000 members in, in the meetup, uh, in 180 uh, meetups. We have plenty of special interest groups, special um, working groups in, in Hyperledger. And all this has happened in five years. Mm -hmm. So if anyone wants to know not even learn, but just to know what's going on in this big bang moment of, of Hyperledger, uh, Learning Materials and Development Working Group Wiki, it's the place to come. Okay? And it's a place to come because, among other things, it's basically 
what, what Jim referred to is a library. It's a library of, of knowledge of other parts and pieces of, of hyperledger, mainly the special interest groups and, and the, the, the working groups. Um, there are templates for everyone. And uh, originally, well, uh, I was in the public sector a long, long time ago, Jim, uh, with, with Rose Schumann when, when it began. And I remember that, that Bobby was the one that, that took us by the hand know, on, on how, to, how to use the wiki, you know. Um, I've been in, in the social impact, um, very much into the climate action and accounting, into the ID working group with Vipin, uh, the capital market. Now, I've been in a lot of places of, of hyperledger. Um, that's why we, we created uh, with 10 countries, the hyperledger Latino America, but um, I've been in a pilgrimage of, of different sites and, and little chapels of, of, of uh, hyperledger. And uh, what I would like to, to, to do in this, in this short period of time is ask you what our wiki is. Besides listening, John, you have the video of, of Bobby. Maybe we should go there first, but what I'd like to ask you in the panel is, what do we have, okay, in the wiki? Um, what can we do with it? And what new fields of, of interaction can we work both inside Hyperledger and outside Hyperledger. So, uh, John, would would you help us uh, sharing your screen and and showing us what Bobby had has to say for 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 us? Sure, I'm glad to do that. Uh, and I think you know just before I try this out, and this is just going to be a test because I'm going to run it out of a Google Chrome tab. But I think what Arnaud said this morning in his keynote address was he mentioned Bobby and mention her boundless energy. And I will definitely echo that uh, sentiment. And I think really, you know, her contribute, you know, her contributions to the Learning Materials Working Group cannot be understated at all. And she would definitely join us if her daughter wasn't getting married today, but <laughs> she has really been a core contributor to that. And I'm gonna see if I can share her video now. Hi, and welcome to the Global Forum. My name is Bobby Mascara, and I'm the co-chair of the Learning Materials Development Working Group. The purpose of the Learning Materials Development Working Group is to organize and share the information that the community has created. Let me show you how to find us. We can be found on the main Hyperledger Wiki page. Just go to their blue drop-down menu bar and go to Groups and select the Learning Materials Development Working Group. Once on our home page, you will see a library type book shelf where we have all of our resources, whether it's a project resource, key terms, or use cases. We try to organize everything that goes on in the community. Also, our home page is for community events. We keep it up to date as we like the community to be well informed as to events, meetups, and special presentations that are happening that week. Also, if you look at our menu on the side, we have valuable templates and resources on education in the community. So please join our next bi-weekly call. If you're new to the community, it's a great place to onboard. And if you're a seasoned Hyperledger community member, come find out what's happening this week. Look forward to seeing you at our next meeting, June 14th. Enjoy the forum. But the main thing what I'll say, Alfonso, is just the Learning Materials Working Group has really been instructive in creating the learning materials for people to get up to speed on Hyperledger. And Bobby's done a great job of assembling that resources and then working with the community to kind of get the training out there. So I think that's really one of the great wins. And then the other thing I want to talk about 
also is just your contribution to really looking at some of the language translation, Spanish language translation of a lot of the hyperledger materials. So Alfonso, you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, sure. For that entry door that, that Jim is, is saying for our inner universe, what happens is the universe is not only so complex and vast, is that we cannot promote decentralization with only one language all over the world. There are many, uh, many, many people that do not speak English yet. Okay, so um, there is another initiative within Hyperledger that promotes translations. The Hyperledger uh, Latino America chapter champions the translation to Spanish. But Anthony O'Dowd and uh, David Boswell began two years ago the translation of eight uh, languages, Chinese, Japanese, Malaya Lama and Tamil in India. We have Spanish, Portuguese, uh, French, uh, Russian, and uh, the idea is that this is an issue of inclusion. There are two issues of inclusion related to, to decentralization, is to let people speak and understand in their own language. It's different when you understand something in your mother tongue. That was said in, in our language section, the Tower of Babel session this, this, uh, this morning. But also, we have to break the silos. And that's something that, that uh, the trade finance group with Andrea Frosinini and Sai Chen and myself, I'm also involved with that. Breaking the silo means that we have to connect all the groups that, that we have developed. Um, those groups make a lot of sense because they gather together people with similar interests and that helps advance. But we might be advancing something that some other group has done best. For instance, climate changing, climate change, climate action and accounting wants to change the climate through a token. But uh, Bipping in capital market has developed eThaler, which is already you know a, a hyperledger tool that can be used for CBDCs. So one of the things we, we've seen through the learning materials and working group is that we have to facilitate learning through languages, but also we have to facilitate connecting the groups within Hyperledger so that we can broaden our horizons, as we were talking before in the virtual meetups uh, session, broaden our horizons, not only geographically, with all the 180 meetup uh, groups, but thematically. Okay. So inclusion through language and inclusion through connection of silo. It's, it's two of the activities that, that the learning materials is embarking uh, upon. There is a third one with the mentorship projects of the Linux Foundation. We have, um, Bobby has one, it's called the chain link or you know, blockchain for, for good and social impact. And then I have the uh, global scouting. That is a project to map learning materials, learning opportunities for blockchain and DLT globally. So we are gonna be working this summer three months, two uh, mentees, one from China, one from India. And we would be working uh, with humans. There would be a lot of questionnaires, but also it's gonna be you know, web crawlers, uh, page scrapers and, and all that. So basically what, what, uh, what we do is uh, connect, connect those gaps. Jim, you once once mentioned in one of our sessions what you envision for for uh, the future of the learning materials. It was it was a special kind of brain, I think you said. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's it's, it's which is not mine. Well, okay, it's, okay, it's certainly not my brain. Nobody wants to replicate my brain or get too far into that brain. But but done well. Um, 
in a past life, um, building out a infrastructure team where we had to really learn an awful lot. And much like learning materials working group, when I showed up here, it looked something like what I had done before. We actually had measured this earlier project where we had said, okay, every time our team, let's say Alfonso or John or somebody works on something, I said, at least document enough of what you've done in Alfonso's case, a document enough of what you've done that if you that if John or I have to back you up, it might take us five or ten times as long, but we're not totally lost at least on providing support in the area you worked on. So that was my goal was to make what I call knowledge portable across my team. And we actually measured it. And what we found was after 18 months, it didn't happen immediately. Alfonso did his work, John did his work, I did my work. We kept dumping into I'll call it this common repository. But eventually, it did pay off to the point that we were able to do. We had this I'll call it live knowledge base. And we literally, the team we had, even though the team had gone down 40%, the volume of our coverage had gone up uh, 300% in 18 months with fewer people. All because, back to your point, Alfonso, you were dead on. Uh, language is critical to get everybody, as you say, drawn in properly. And I agree that English only isn't getting that done. But beyond the language thing, your point was perfect about the idea that we have information silos and what we really need is far better portability. I used to use the example when I would present to an audience and say, look, um, I'm not a, a brain surgeon, I'm not a certified brain surgeon. What the goal of my learning, uh, I'll call it on-demand learning, my ability to deliver on-demand quickly in a perfect world, which is not where I am, I'd say, you need brain surgery, John, let's say, needs brain surgery at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, and uh, hopefully he doesn't, but if he did, you'd want to know that if I was the person that had to operate on him, I had all the skills I needed by, by 7.59 to be the best person in the world to perform that task. Well, how can I do that? It's a knowledge on demand idea that says you're not going to have the time in many cases uh, or even the notification that you need to, in a sense, deliver on this stuff quickly. So you need to have these resources that are quickly available. And, you know, I'll go back to that front door model and say it's a great front door. And we just, I think, you know, with your leadership and Bobby's, continue to need, need to, as you said, add more so that we reduce the silos. And that's really the goal. And, you know, as, as much as has been accomplished, there's certainly more to do there. And I think, again, that test of saying, can somebody come in who doesn't know anything about this community, but is asked or charged, you know, maybe John goes on vacation. He's the lead DLT guy for his company. He goes on vacation. I come in as backup and I'm asked to put together a project plan immediately because John's not there. Is there a way I can do that? Where would I go for my resources? If, if, you know, in that problem space, I'd say maybe the right answer is come in here, go to our front door and start exploring and see what project plans, what solutions look like, look at the templates, look at some of the use cases that are out there, uh, look at some of the training available because that's critical. You know, and again, that was pointed to. And uh, I'll call it, <laughs> to, to, again, to the credit, you and Bobby both, but the the, what you guys have done is such a big deal. It's like even now we have that, uh, that other thing. If Bobby were here, she'd be talking about BC Employee, right? That whole big fat uh, thing that she initiated that we're now all hooked into deliver on, which is the idea that you are somebody who may be technically competent, but you really don't know blockchain and you don't know what the opportunities are in there. And how do you come into this space and how do you learn about what are the career opportunities in the blockchain space? Um, give me something about what blockchain looks like. Can I connect with recruiters a little bit, understand from their point of view what kind of talent they want to hire? How can I make those connections? She uh, initiated that whole program that we're all part of now helping to deliver over the next few months called BC Employee. Um, and I put a link to that in the chat. But that's a, a very, very big deal as well. Um, so there's a lot of things that, in a sense, are coming through this group. And I would say it would, uh, if you don't show up at every meeting, you definitely want to check in on a regular basis to see, in a sense, what's changing. So as Alfonso said, he has a lot of ideas. Bobby certainly has never stopped generating ideas since she initiated the group. And so, um, 
you know, all I can say is it's one of the better resources that you're going to find in the Hyperledger community for sure, in my opinion. Thank which is why you, I come out there a lot. Thank you. We're just about to end the session. John, would you like to add a final comment? We are just running out of time. Yeah, no problem. I would just say uh, check the chat. There's the BC Employee event that Jim mentioned. Reach out to any one of us about that, and we're looking to run that starting in July. And then also I put in a link for training, and you can look at certified Hyperledger Fabric Developer Training, and I think that's another good uh, – thing that the Hyperledger Learning Materials Working Group has fostered as well. Thank you. Thank you both, not only for this presentation, but for all your ideas. This Learning Materials and Working Group is what it is because of Bobby launching it, supporting it, but all of you and us collaborating. Thank you very much. Come to our wiki. All the ones that are listening, come to our wiki, please. Bye-bye.